Okay, so now let us look at this uh, DNA replication. So DNA replication, the process, the idea here is we want to produce two identical rep replica of DNA molecule. And this process is the anabolic process. Okay, anabolic process. So means that we are going to join the nucleotide, 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 nucleotide join together and so on. Are you clear? So elongate the process. So this anabolic uh, process and it's a basis for the biological inheritance because we want to, uh, we want the cells to carry out mitosis and cell division from one cell to two cells. So means that whatever DNA material we have we need to replicate it. Are you clear? So the replication actually takes place during the S phase of the interface in a cell cycle. At this moment, the S here understand it as a synthesis phase. Okay. So for DNA replications, scientists propose three models. I propose three models. The first model is called conservative model. Second model is called semi-conservative model. And third model is called dispersive model. So what's the conservative model? Conservative model means that both parental strands would remain together and two newly synthesized strands will form a second double helix after replication. Okay, I will draw it out later, don't worry. So semi-conservative said that the two parental strands will separate during replication, each function as a template for synthesis of the new complementary strand. Dispersive methods in this case state that both daughters' molecule contain a mixture of parental and newly synthesized DNA. So, what does this mean? Okay. So, we have this three model. This three model. Huh? So, now, how this three model actually functions? Look at this. First, we'll start with the first model called conservative model. Conservative replication model, okay? So this is what we call as a zero generation. Means the original. Okay, yeah, zero generation. Then after first replication, first generation, and I have the second generation. Okay, so zero generation, first generation, and second generation. So what we look at it, okay, now, uh, so first method, conservative model. So under conservative model, this is my original. So DNA, double helix. Okay, DNA is their double helix. So what happened after first generation? From one molecule of DNA, now you get two molecules of DNA. So these two molecules of DNA, basically, parental remain as parental. Can you see that? Then newly formed DNA, can you see that? I use a red color to show the newly formed. Are you clear? From one. Okay. So now the blue color still at the second generation still remains at the blue color. The red color. Can you see that? So the red color will be used to generate a new red color. Clear? Okay, guys. So can you see the original parental strand, not the blue color? Always together, okay? Always together. So this is what we call as um, conservative generations. Are you clear? Okay, yeah? conservative generation. So it means that this is the first molecule. So from the first molecule, you get the first molecule and second molecule. So the first molecule and second molecule, now you get the third molecule and number four molecule. Can I see that? Are you clear? So it means that in this process, the first molecule always remain as first molecule. Do you see that? So this method is known as conservative model. 
to compare. Okay, yeah. so now let us look at semi-conservative. If semi-conservative, same thing, I start with blue color as the first one. So this first one now will separate parental strands separate and newly synthesized strands now join, become the hybrid DNA. So can you see that? This is no more second molecule. Can you see that? So this is the first molecule. Can you see that, guys? There's a hybrid molecule. Do you get it? Can you see that? Hybrid molecule. Okay, I think I go in this way, you will see it better. No, sorry, guys. I use a slightly different red color to show you guys the third generation. Okay, can I see that? So now, what happened to the third, uh, sorry, the second generation? So look at this, huh? This is our first molecule. So first molecule and second molecule now like this. Okay, so what happened to the, my first molecule now? My first molecule now open up. Blue color, red color. Second molecule, red color, blue color. Okay, and then newly synthesized. Newly synthesized, newly synthesized, newly synthesized. Can you see that? So it means that from first molecule, now you get a third molecule, and so second molecule, you get number fourth molecule. Can you see that? So it will have always have this what we call the hybrid DNA. Always hybrid. Are you clear? Okay. So this is meant by the semi. Conservative. You compare. You compare conservative and semi-conservative. Conservative always will have. Can you see that? Conservative always will have the blue color together. But semi-conservative, you can see that you have the blue and the red color together. This is meant by semi-conservative. Dispersive, even worse. Show you guys dispersive method. Number three, I will guide, uh, accept it first. I will tell you guys more later, okay? So dispersive. Dispersive model is basically a cut and paste model. Now look at this, eh? blue color. So this number one, molecule number one. So this molecule number one, it will cut it. The first strand, cut it into half. Second strand, cut it into half. Then newly synthesized one, newly synthesized, newly synthesized, newly synthesized. Can I see that? Mix and match. So from number one, now get number two. Can? So now next, what happened here? Number one here, again will be cut. So blue color, red color, red color. Blue color. Can I see that? And then newly synthesized, newly synthesized, newly synthesized, newly synthesized. So this from one, you get the molecule number three. Okay. So molecule number two, I'll put it here, molecule number two, red color, blue color. Can I see that? Separate, and then blue color, red color. Newly synthesized strand. Newly synthesized, newly synthesized, newly synthesized. So to number two, you get number four. Are you clear? Okay. So. You can compare now, guys. You can compare. Okay. So basically, each model have their own methods of replication. 
Okay, each model they have their own method replication. So conservative, you can see that okay, the blue color always together. Semi-conservative, you can see that blue always mixed with red after replication. And dispersive, you can see that blue color won't remain on the same strand, but mix. Are you clear? We can take a photo. Then I'll explain why I use different colors here. Okay. Again, it's quite confusing. I understand. Okay. But bear in mind that I will explain it. Why different color? Okay. Have you taken a photo? So now we have these three proposed models, conservative, semi-conservative, and dispersive. Which model is a correct model? So scientists have to carry out the experiment. So these scientists, they were Manson and Stoff. Both of them carry out the experiment. So why blue, why red now? First, when the bacteria, they use a uh, bacteria called E. coli, this E. coli will produce their nucleotide. Okay, they produce a nucleotide. And we do know that nucleotide contains the base. So the base contains the nitrogen atom. So scientists decided to grow this E. coli in this medium or media contains heavy nitrogen as isotope. So the media, if a normal isotope the N will be 14. This is normal. Okay, I'm going to put it here. So it decided to grow in this 15N media. So this N is called heavy isotope. So what's the normal isotope? Normal isotope is 14N. Are you clear? So in this heavy isotope media, I use a blue color. So it means that, guys, now, this is a growing fast. So this fl the flask contains the media. So this media contains 15N isotope. So you grow it for many, many generations. So it means that this bacterial, the E. coli, the DNA actually is a heavy DNA. So the DNA now is blue color. Why? Because the base, the nitrogens actually, they have heavy isotope 15N. Okay, clear? We grow it. So it means the bacteria need nitrogen. So when bacteria take the nitrogen, the nitrogen is the 15N nitrogen. The media contains 15N. So it means that they make their, this isotope also make, also make the uh, nucleotides, the nitrogens of the, uh, the, the nucleotides will have 15N nitrogen. So it means that the DNA will be heavier DNA. Okay, so what is the difference if scientists grow them? Okay, yeah? so if a scientist grow them in a flask that contain normal isotope, Fourteen N. Okay, what will happen here is this E. coli will produce their DNA. Their DNA will be lighter. DNA. So if I put a number, so it will be fourteen N, fourteen N. So it total are fourteen, fourteen. So I'll be three units twenty eight. Let's say twenty eight unit the the weight. Okay, but for E. coli that grow in the medium contain fifteen N. So 15N, 15N. So means that here you get 30 units of the weight. Can I see that? So means that can I see that you can differentiate their DNA now. If you grow them in the 14N media and contain 15N media. So what we can do here is if I take the sample, of the DNA, in these solutions called cesium chloride solutions. So I put the DNA and I spin the DNA with a very high speed. So this 28 units of DNA of 14 and 14 and will appear at the top of the tube because they are not so heavy. 
Can I see that? But if I take the DNA from this tube, the blue color, same thing, I spin it in cesium chloride for high speed. You can see this DNA heavier, so it will appear at the bottom of the tube when I shine it with UV. So this is how we can differentiate their uh, DNA. So this is 28 unit. This one is a 30 unit. You get the idea? Okay, I start my story here. Okay, uh, so E. coli, they have to make their own nucleotides. So the nucleotide base actually contains nitrogen atoms. So this nitrogen atom, if the scientists grow them in the media contain 15N, so heavy isotope, then the E. coli will produce the DNA with 15N, 15N. So this 15N, 15N uh, DNA, it will spin it inside this uh, cesium chloride with a high ultra centrifuge, very, very high speed. Then you can see because they're heavier, they will sink down to the bottom of the tube compared to the E. coli that produce this DNA 14N, 14N. So it will appear at the top of the tube because it is lighter. Okay, so I can take a photo of this, then I'll continue the story. So what scientists going to do? Okay, yeah? so this DNA, we, talk, we call it as the first generation, a zero generation. So all bacterial DNA now 15N, 15N, heavier one. So scientists decided to do next. Now take some of the bacteria, okay, grow them in a flask. That contains 14N. Okay, so it means that take some of the bacteria here, transfer it. Are you clear? So it means that bacteria will start to carry out DNA replication, but now they make their nucleotides cannot be 15N anymore. Their nucleotide confirm will be 14N. So what will happen here is, so it depends. Okay, so now, first method, if conservative, according to conservative model, then the DNA, the blue color will remain as blue color. The blue color will be used to mix the red color. You get the idea? The DNA replication cannot because the blue color always remains as blue color. Right? Okay, red color remains as a red color. Why? Because it's newly synthesized. So this is called parental molecule. Okay, parental molecule remain as parental molecule, and this one is called newly synthesized molecule. I clear. I use a blue color. Sorry, this is a parental molecule. So, parental molecule. What is the weight? How many unit weight? Okay, the unit of weight here will be 30, 15 and 15 n. But for the newly synthesized one, 14, 14, so it will be 28. So theoretically, if I spin the DNA now, I spin the DNA in a cesium chloride, what will happen? You're going to see two bands. Blue color bands will be at the bottom because two types of DNA, can you see two types of DNA and red color will be on top. Represent this is 28, this is 30. So you have two bands. If this is conservative, it's correct. You're going to get two bands, okay? Now, if semi-conservative, if semi-conservative is a correct model, what will happen here is the parental strands open up allow the newly synthesized strands form. Can you see that? So in this case, you can see it's we call it hybrid DNA. This form of DNA is called hybrid DNA. I use purple color. Means that if I have the mixture, can you see that? 
the DNA molecule have the mixture of the parental DNA. So in this case, one is 15, one is 14, so 29. 29. So if I spin the DNA, okay, in the cesium chloride, you expect to see, okay, a band appear at the center because only one part of DNA and this represents 29. If semi-conservative. Are you clear? Can I see that? If semi-conservative. So you compare to the conservative. Conservative, you have two bands, 28, 30. And semi-conservative, then you have only one band because it's a hybrid DNA. Okay. So now, how about dispersive? If this perceive, so parental DNA now, original parental DNA, cut into half. Okay, cut into the half. I mean, mix and match. Lah, okay, I use cut into half easier to explain. Okay, then mix with red. Mix with red. Mix with red. Mix with red. So you can see that it seems like we have full red and full blue, correct not? Right? So in this case, in this okay, you can see that parental strands now okay, and the newly synthesized strands are mixed. They are mixed in this case. Are you clear? So if you, if you calculate, okay, half of the 15, 7.5. Half of the 15, 7.5. Blue color, half of the 15, 7.5, 7.5. Half of the 14, so seven. Half of the seven, seven, seven. You calculate now each strength, you will get 29. So again, when you spin it in the cesium chloride, again, you will get a band at the center, which is 29. Okay, clear, guys? This three model. If you use this, this three model, a little bit difficult for me to put everything. Now, I can take a photo. You can see this three model. Okay, clear or not so far? So, this is a proposed expected result. Okay, so if conservative expected result, two bands. If semi-conservative expected result, one band at 29. Dispersive expected result, one band. So what is the actual result? So scientists carry out the experiment. Then the actual result show that only one band appear at the center. Only one band appear at the center. So indication. So what's the, what is the conclusion here? Conclusion from here. So conservative replication model is not a correct model because if a conservative is a correct model, then you should get two bands. Okay, but still cannot differentiate between semi-conservative. Maybe. Dispersive, maybe. Are you clear? So uh, at the first generation, after the first replication, after the first replication, you can see that we already can exclude out conservative already because it cannot be conservative. Okay, so it either can be semi-conservative or dispersive. Okay. So now, what scientists going to do here is, so continue to let the second round take place, second replication to take place. So still continue to grow them in the flask, take them out, continue to grow them in the flask. Okay, I use this color, but it's the same. Okay, just for your information, it's the same. So still 14N. 
Okay, still 14 ants. So I use a slightly lower color of red or different color of red to differentiate it. Okay, to differentiate it. But it's the same thing. Okay, so what happened here is now, if I continue with a conservative, to prove that conservative confirmed wrong, if the conservative continue, what will happen here is the blue color remain as blue color. So the blue color will be used to form this okay, light red color. Okay, the original red color will be used to form a new red color again. So in terms of the mass, blue and blue is 15, 15, so 30. Can you see that? And then the red color and red color because 14, 14, so 28. And then a light red color, is actually they are the same, still 28, 28. So means that guys, if I spin them, the DNA and the conservative, how many bands? If I spin the DNA, again, two bands. One band, where thin band at 30, thin band. Okay, bottom. And a thick band, red color, a bit a little bit thicker band because more DNA, lighter DNA. So here, 28. Are you clear? So 30 and 28. Again, two band, but now the ratio different. Okay, the ratio different. So if conservative. Now, how about semi-conservative? Semi-conservative, now, they are hybrids. So blue color and red color open up. Red color and the blue color open up. So newly synthesized strand now will be the light red color, light red color, but they are 14N. Can you see that? So again, you have hybrid DNA. I use purple color for hybrid. Hybrid. Which is 29, 29. But newly synthesized one is 14, 14, correct or not? So newly synthesized one is not hybrid DNA. So this one is 28. This one is 28. So it means that if I spin the DNA, Okay, so you're going to see how many bands, two bands. So red color, 28 here. Okay, lighter DNA, 28. And you have the hybrid DNA, two bands at the center, which is 29. Can you see that? Now, how about dispersive? Dispersive a bit difficult. Now, more, I mean, uh, confusing. Okay, follow me. Yeah? So, just now the red. Okay, I said the blue. The blue. Open up. Sorry, the blue and the red open up. Okay, the red and the blue open up. Okay. So newly synthesized strand. Wait, now let me see. Ah, oh, correct. Newly synthesized strands. Newly synthesized strand. Okay. So newly synthesized strands. Newly synthesized strands. Okay. So another one. Blue. Red. Okay. And then red. Blue. So newly synthesized strands. Oh, sorry. Newly synthesized strands. Newly synthesized strands. Newly synthesized. Newly synthesized. So it's a mixture. Can you see that? It's a mixture. Okay. So what will happen here is look at this. This is half blue. Half blue, seven point five. Red is. Seven, seven, seven. So each of them can I see a seven, 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 half right, seven, 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 seven. Blue is seven point five, arbitrary unit. 
So the weight, all of them will be purple color in this case. Okay, will be purple color, but all of them have the same weight. Can you see that? All of them actually 28.5. So means that if I spin the DNA, you're going to get one band in between 28 and 29 now. Also one band in between 28 to 29, so 28.5. Okay, so this is dispersive. So you can compare, guys. Now you can compare these three. Conservative, semi-conservative, and dispersive for the second round. Okay, but what is the actual result? Actual result show two bands. Okay, actual result shows two bands. Where is the, these two bands? We have the band at the center, indicates 29, and one band at the top, indicate 28. Can I see that? So what is the conclusion? Conclusion is confirm, double confirm, conservative. It's the wrong method. Dispersive. Now it's wrong, so only semi-conservative is a correct model. Okay, it's a correct model. Okay, huh? so I stop recording. Go through. So again, guys, you can see that first the DNA is heavy DNA. So under semi-conservative, this will form the hybrid DNA. So only one band, and actual results show one band. And if will continue for the second generation. Second generation, you can see that the uh, semi -con uh, semi conservative uh, DNA replication methods you get two hybrid DNA and two uh, light DNA, so that's why you form two bands. Okay, so so far, do you guys okay with uh, understand or not? So let's look at this classical model for DNA replication. So you need to shade the correct strand as a result of each model of replication. So in this table. So as I said that, you can try for conservative. Conservative and very, very simple. Eh? If you want to shoot for conservative, so the original one is still remain the same. Can you see that? Okay, so separate. And then here, the original strand. Okay, you will shoot it. So semi-conservative, very important. It will be like this. Open up, so one left, one right, okay, and one left, it always at the end, one right. Can I see that? This is how. Dispersive a bit hard okay, to shade, okay? dispersive a bit hard to shade, okay, so it will be half. Okay, if I take this one half, and I take this one half. Oops, sorry. Yep. Okay, I'll take this one half at the back. Okay, so this one half. Yeah, take the front, this one half. Can I see that? Half, half. Okay, yeah. do you get it? Half here, half at the back. Half at the back, half at the front. Okay, this verse is a bit difficult. So, okay. So now continue. Okay. Half the front, half at the back. Half at the back, half at the front. So this is dispersive. So it means the original one is still there. You want to shade. Okay. So dispersive. So white color means that is the one, the newly synthesized one. Eh? White color is the newly synthesized one. Okay. So for the semi-conservative, you need to know, eh? semi-conservative. Okay, please shade it. Hmm. So you can see the different. Okay, so if you put in the data here, so this is a heavier one, 30. This is 20, eh, 28. This is 30, 28, 28, 28. Okay, this one hybrid, so 29, 29. So this one hybrid, 29, 29. This one 28, 28 new, newly synthesized one. 
Okay. Can a dispersive this one 29, 29, but after that you mix it, it becomes 28.5, 28.5, 28.5, 28.5. So when you spin it, then you will see the difference. Are you clear? When you spin the DNA, you will see the difference. So this model of DNA replication remained untested until Manson and Stoff eh, devised an experiment that distinguished between the three models here. So you can see that first, okay, I mean, the side opposite, they use a red color first and then blue color, but it's the same idea here, okay? So look at this. So in this case, DNA become uniform label with 15N in the nitrogenous space. So it means that if you spin them, you will get 15N, 15N, which is 30. Can you see that? The gravitational force, okay? So then you grow them in the 14N. So you have the first generation, second generation, and third generation. Okay, so don't worry about third generation. So we start the first generations and second generation. So you need to complete this paragraph by using the given terms. Okay, so please complete it now. Five minutes. So in 1958, Matthew Mansesson and Stoff actually carry out experiment. So they grow this E. coli on a medium that contain heavy isotope in the form of ammonium chlorides. Okay, these bacteria use ammonium chlorides to synthesize the nitrogenous base. So this nitrogenous base will be 15N. Okay, so researchers subject them to density gradient centrifugation. So it means they based on the density. Okay, so using these centrifugations, so the large molecules such as DNA can be separated based on their density. And we mix the DNA, uh, this DNA with the cesium chloride. Okay, and we centrifuge at a very high speed. Solution form a density gradient in a centrifuge tube ranging from a lowest density at the top to the highest density at the bottom. Okay, so it means that the DNA molecule now will migrate to the regions of the gradient identical to their density. So it means that the weight line in this case. So after one uh, many, many rounds, so the team actually transferred the rest of the bacteria to a growth medium contains this uh, lighter on uh, isotope, lytho uh, 14N isotope. So a sample was taken after the first DNA replication. Another sample was taken after the second DNA replication. They extracted the DNA from bacteria in the sample, centrifuge, and then they, uh, they use a UV light. Okay? The researcher photographed the resulting DNA band, which represented the peak of the DNA concentration at different density. So density of DNA depends on the, uh, the concentration of 14N and 15N. So the more 14N, 15N nitrogen isotope present, the denser the DNA uh, depends on the, this 15N isotopes. Okay, so now look at the big part here. So in density gradient centrifugation, the concentration of cesium chloride is the highest at the bottom. Can you see that? 14N, S15N, and the lowest at the top. Okay. So when the researcher subject the extracted DNA E. coli from a medium contained 15N, so it means that you can see that at the zero generations. So what do you expect to see if the conservative in the first DNA replications? So again, guys, you have two bands, Cranot, one at the bottom. and one at the top. Okay. So after the second after the second time in our generations, again they will have one band at the bottom, but thinner band, and one band at the top, thicker band. So thicker band represent 28, thinner band represent 30. Okay. So next. How about semi-conservative? So semi-conservative, you only have one band at the center of the first generations. But second generations, you can see one band at the center. And thin bands, right? Blue color. Get lighter bands at the top. 
So lighter band represent 28. The okay. uh, purple bands represent 29. Okay, it's dispersive. Same thing. Okay, but after that, it will become at 28.5. So this one, 29, 28.5. In between 28 and 29, okay? So uh, what I want you guys to, uh, let me stop recording first.